What's good everyone and welcome back to another reaction video. Today we're reacting to the luckiest people who survived the impossible from the thumbnail I have seen. These people would have to have the most insane amount of luck to survive an incident, case, scenario, or something along those lines that should indefinitely kill someone. But they live through it all. They have so much good luck that they make you think to not ever challenge them to anything that bets on luck, chance, or anything of the such. They would have to have that much skill. At least that's what I think when it comes to the question. And we're going to see this. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button down below. Hit the subscribe button to support the channel, support the content provided, and so on and so forth. Hit the notification button to be notified immediately when a new video comes out. And the link to this video will be down in the description below. So be sure to give the creator some love and support for the video they made. Other than that, let's start this video. The other day, I was racing at over 100 miles an hour down the freeway when I lost control of the car, flipped over 10 times, and ended up halfway down the side of a cliff. But I got out without a scratch. All right, admittedly, I was playing GTA, but some people have escaped from much crazier situations in real life with the help of a whole lot of luck. From an exploding toilet to falling what? into a vat of liquid chocolate. Huh? Let's take a look at even more luckiest people who survived the impossible. <laughs> Skier fear. I've never been skiing because when someone says vacation, I think of warm sunny beaches, not freezing my tushy off on a mountain. And I recently... I'm going to be honest with you. I would prefer the freezing cold than anything else. I recently saw a horrifying video that and only put me off further. Frick? Back in April 2022, an experienced skier was hitting the slopes in the French Alps what? when this happened. Gosh. Whoa. The man plummeted straight through the ice into a deep crevasse and dropped down a terrifying 49 feet before managing to wedge his skis in and scrape to a stop on a thin ledge. Ooh, I'm getting chills just looking at that. Thanks that to a heap lucky. of luck and a skilled team of fellow skiers, this guy was pulled out of the icy hellhole by a rope and pulley. But the whole process took hours. He wasn't alone in his traumatic experience either. Because 2022 was warmer than usual, more people took to the slopes and crevasse falls rose drastically from around 38 a year to 70. Sadly, six of those 70 never made it back out. Which makes our boy's incredible escape that much more impressive. That's a whole load of nopes to the slopes from me. To be a fair, rough I commute. A daily okay, I have no idea what's happening here on this. Here, it's my computer itself or something else. I have no idea. This is not a visual effect or anything. This is something that I'm actually going to have to take this to sh this computer to the shop for. Oh, I really would not like to do that, but I have no choice in the matter. So, continuing on, that was a terrifying experience that I hope no one ever has to experience. But on the other hand, I also prefer the snow more than the blazing heat. If I had a chance to go to either South America to or Canada. I'm going Canada. 
Because A, I prefer the snow in cold areas than anything else. Daily commute into work can be long, cramped, and boring. In oh. April 2022, however, one commuter ended up in a situation so terrifying you wouldn't wish it on your worst enemy. The woman was waiting for a train at a station in Buenos Aires, Argentina, when she suddenly started feeling lightheaded. People around her watched in horror as she stumbled forward and fell over straight into the path of the moving train. Oh my gosh. Charles, that was the end of her. It certainly looked like it. The woman didn't just hit the moving carriage, she disappeared beneath it entirely. The train screeched to a halt and a huge crowd gathered around the spot where she'd fallen, but there was no sign of her. That is, until they heard somebody calling for help. What? She was alive? Unbelievably, the woman had slid mere inches beneath the carriage as they raced above her and was pressed to the side of the platform edge. Just a moment later, and she'd have been a human smoothie. Astonished, the witnesses pulled her back out and were even more astonished to see she was mostly unharmed. After going to the hospital, the doctors told her she'd experienced a freak drop in blood pressure, which what? led to the fall. But after just a couple of days, she was right as rain again. Or should I say, right as train. Too soon. Uh, I'll see myself out. Yeah, Between too falling soon, down a crevasse and falling down beside a moving train, which fall did you think was scarier? For the crevasse, hit that like button, and for the train, hit subscribe. All done. Great. What weird and wild escape from fate have we got next? Okay, that thing's just gonna bug me all day. That thing's just gonna keep bugging me. But yeah, I have to say that... Between the two... Probably... Probably the snow mountain thing. Because there's a chance you would never get out. You will either starve to death, freeze to death, or so many other things. The train one, you have a chance to have a quick and possibly as painless as possible. Hopefully. But yeah, rest the is in peace. More okay, I'm not proud of it, fine. but I've left my toilet in a state that would scare even Pennywise the clown. But it's Why? never been dangerous. However, when 58-year-old New Yorker Michel Pierre went to the bathroom one fateful day in 2013, he couldn't have known the terror that was about to befall him. After finishing up, Michel grabbed hold of the toilet handle and flushed, only it didn't flush. It exploded. What? The entire toilet shattered into hundreds of tiny pieces of porcelain, each one shooting in a different direction like a giant poopy grenade. The shock of the blast sent Michel flying backwards into the opposite wall, knocking him unconscious. When he awoke, he was lying in a pool of water and broken porcelain. Shocked, hurt, but thankfully very much alive, Michel called emergency services and was taken to hospital where he got 30 stitches and made a full recovery. All right, Ooh. so what the heck happened? Well, it wasn't an evil toilet clown. Turns I out so. water to the building had been shut off for plumbing work that day. Because of the work they were doing, when Michel flushed the toilet, it created a huge buildup of pressure in the pipe, which burst not only Michel's toilet, but three others in the building too. Man, I'm used to explosions in the restroom, but not ones that come from the toilet itself. Uh. Lumber whack. Trees are one of Earth's most precious resources. Huh? Vital lifelines True. that pump oxygen into the air and keep us alive. They yeah. can also be incredibly dangerous. Something Canadian tree feller Jeremy oh. Cadot found out the hard way back in 2017. Jeremy was sawing a particularly big tree down when he suddenly heard a loud cracking sound. What the? Pipes. One wrong move and they'd have needed a spatula to peel him off the floor. It looks like the base of the tree was rotten, something Jeremy didn't realize until he sawed deep into it. 
Because of the rod, the trunk was weak and split vertically up the middle, something called a barber chair, after the old barber chairs that used to position a person's head back and feet up. By sheer chance, our boy jumped the right way, though, and saved himself from a nasty demise. What tremendous luck. That's terrifying. Shock explosion. Ever since reading Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory when I was a kid, I've always loved the idea of working in one. Turns out, though, the reality is less Oompa Loompa Doopity Doo and more, oh, geez, help, I'm gonna die. Or at least it was for Pennsylvanian chocolate factory worker Patricia Bourge back in April 2023. It was an ordinary day at the factory, apart okay. from one thing. There was a strange smell of gas in the air. Patricia reported it to her supervisor, but they just said someone higher up would deal with it. Big mistake. Just 30 minutes later, a huge explosion ripped through the factory and sent the whole place up in flames. What? The blast set Patricia alight. Panicking, she started to run, but the floor oh. gave way beneath her and she plummeted into a huge vat of liquid chocolate in the basement. The liquid in the vat was only chest high, but it had extinguished the flames and broken her fall enough to save her life. However, she'd also broken her feet on impact and was far too short to climb out of the vat. She was trapped. Firefighters arrived to put out the flames, but they couldn't see Patricia or hear her cries for help. Water from their hoses gradually poured in from above, and Patricia managed to use the rising water level in the vat to climb out. Then she heaved herself over the edge, fell again, and fell in a waist-deep pool of water on the basement floor. What? Unable to walk, she clutched onto a bit of plastic tubing and screamed for help. Nobody came. Hours passed like this. However, just as she was giving up hope, a team of rescuers found her. Battered, freezing cold, and confused, Patricia was carried out of the factory and taken to hospital, where, thankfully, she's expected to make a full recovery. Whew. I don't know about Willy Wonka, but uh... that was an absolutely bonkers story of survival. Okay, that... That was plain luck. Being a set ablaze, falling into a pit of liquid chocolate that doused the flames, but had her the like her legs broken, but then was saved by the water caused by the firefighters, which allowed her to escape the containment she was in and could have actually damaged her legs even more. Until she landed in another thing of water, which broke her fall, and got onto a tube to travel around, calling for help, and probably would have died of hypothermia, and yet... She was still saved by some. Wow. That woman's existence is defined by luck. Blunder blade. I really some people absolutely one, so. love DIY. Me, though, nah, not a fan. And it's all because of videos like these. What the? Yeah, so this guy was using something called an angle grinder, essentially a spinning blade used for cutting metal. If you think that sounds dangerous, you're completely right. Supposedly, halfway through using it, the blade broke, flew off, and got lodged in his hat. Holy moly. That if that uh, him. corduroy bucket hat hadn't been there, it would have gone straight into his head. Wait. Would a bucket hat really stop a speeding blade? I mean, it's very unlikely, but possible, I suppose. But if we look at this shot here, we can see that he was using a tool with his right hand. When it switches to his face, it looks like the blade is in the right side of his hat. But look at the text on it. The image has been flipped. If we flip it back, we can see it's actually on his left side. Hmm, I guess he could have been using it with his left hand, 
But if the blade sheared off mid-spin, would some fabric really have been enough to stop it? Really convenient, seeing as he's not wearing any other safety equipment. A little too convenient, if you ask me. Personally, I think this video has been staged for TikTok clout. But what do you think? Let me know down in the comments. Can't say. Resistance. The brain is really a remarkable say. organ. Not only is it responsible mm. for everything we do and feel, it can also keep working despite major injury. And back in 2016, one unfortunate 12-year-old girl from India found this out the hard and very gross way. She'd been Ow. suffering from seizures, headaches, and general weakness for over two years, but nobody knew why. Then her symptoms suddenly got so bad, she became paralyzed down the right side of her body and couldn't even feed herself. Her parents rushed her to hospital where she had an MRI scan and doctors made a horrifying discovery. A tapeworm larva had been living inside a cyst in her head for what? almost 10 years. Ugh. How? Nita probably ate the larva when it was smaller in some contaminated food, then made its way to her brain and began growing there. The cyst had gotten so huge that it weighed over one and a half pounds. It was so big, it was nearly the size of her entire brain. Oh, that is horrendous. Doctors were astonished. The giant growth could have ruptured at any point and ended her life instantly. But by some miracle, it hadn't. Because it was so close to her brain, though, it had caused a whole bunch of issues, which meant her paralysis endured. There was only one thing to it. Surgery. Incredibly, after a two-and-a-half-hour operation, the cyst was successfully removed intact, and Nita pulled through. Two weeks later, all oh. her symptoms had disappeared. Wow. Nita's now an ordinary girl again, enjoying life to its fullest. Driving near That's disasters. Thankful. You're smart. You don't we need could. me to tell you why driving can be dangerous. I hope. But there are far more risks to the road than you might imagine. Like, I don't know, yeah. trees randomly collapsing as you drive past. Okay, yeah, that has happened before, but... What the frick? Cripes. A second earlier and that driver would have been a goner. Yep, nature can be a very cruel mistress. Wait, As one man later? from Kenya will testify, in May 2023, the Galana River flooded and rushed into his truck, overturning it and leaving him stranded amidst the rising waters for over six hours. Thank trucks come with their own set of risks, especially if you're driving behind them. In Florida, back in 2018, one woman was driving down Interstate 95 when a plywood sheet in the truck in front of her came loose and flew backwards, smashing straight through her windscreen. By sheer luck, the sheet didn't touch her, but it had gotten terrifyingly close to her neck. It's a miracle she managed to stop the vehicle before losing control. See, the truck driver hadn't tied down the sheet properly. And it's a problem plaguing more than just pickup drivers. Tiktoker Alo420 posted horrible. the following video after a similar accident she happened her head. while he was driving behind a log truck. Easy. And was saving this fit right into her. You're crazy, boy. God. Yeah, literally. So this is a general service announcement to anyone hauling anything on trucks. Double, triple, then quadruple check that your loads are secure. Hey, quintuple, sextuple, and septuple check it if you got time. I wouldn't even be mad at an octuple check. But even if you never drive behind another truck again, you could still end up in some sticky situations. One of my viewers was driving past a truck when the brake pad flew off the wheel well and, you guessed it, hit their windscreen. They slammed on the brakes and thankfully the pad broke free without injuring anybody. But it just goes to show you can never be truly prepared. Something nobody knows more than Mauricio Henao from California. Mauricio oh. was sitting parked below a hillside near his house okay. when his girlfriend called him and told him to go back in their home to check something. 
Mauricio got out of the car and walked back into the house, but as soon as he crossed the threshold, there was a loud rumbling followed by an even louder crash. Shocked, Mauricio turned around and was horrified at what he saw. A huge rock was buried in the roof of his car, completely crushing it. It had fallen down the hill in a landslide, and if his girlfriend had called him just moments later, it would have smashed right into him. Ugh. Talk about a rocky start to the day. A close shave. Oh, Sometimes I hear a story that okay. stuns me as much as it... Okay, those truck and car things are terrifying. Because those things can happen. A tree falling? I saw it happen. Heck, it would happen outside of me. In a car. Actually, maybe I should put my own story on there, because... <laughs> because a tree almost crushed a group of people when I was, like... Like... I think it was a year or two after Pokemon Platinum came out. Yeah. Yeah, it was a year. Or it was probably a year after Platinum came out. But anyway. We were having this like giant picnic celebrating uh event. I was off to the side, away from the trees, and as I was coming back. I saw that a tree fell, well, a tree branch that was like, uh, it was half as thick as a tree. I'm going to be honest. It was half as thick as a tree. And it landed flat on the ground, not even hitting anyone or any of the stuff we left out, and bam! It landed right there in dead center. And that stunned everyone. That we literally had to call a bunch of people about what happened. Mainly safety control, I think. I don't remember what they were called, but they came and they had to haul the tree into a truck that they brought. Well, the tree branch. And again, this thing was half as thick as, a, as the tree that was there. And it wasn't a small tree or a thin tree. It was thick. It was the size of three people standing side by side who are adults. And if anyone knows of the uh, Fluffy, they were all uh, husky in appearance anyone if anyone's seen any comedy shows by Gabriel aka Fluffy then I think you know what I mean makes my stomach churn this is one of those stories. In a small Indian village in Uttar Pradesh, a young woman called Taiba went out for a walk. While wandering, she okay. came across a construction site and, intrigued, decided to explore it. This, it turns out, was a very bad move. The place was littered with rocks and half-finished structures, and Taiba wasn't being super careful where she was looking. Suddenly, she tripped and landed neck first on a long metal rod that was protruding from a brick. Luckily, however, there were people nearby who saw the whole thing happen, 
They ran to get help, and it wasn't long before paramedics came to the shocking scene. But she needed to be taken to the hospital. When they got there, the doctors were gobsmacked. By some miracle, the rod had missed all of the vital nerves and blood vessels in her head. The docs got to work gradually Damn. pulling it out, and after 35 grueling minutes, it was over. Amazingly, Taiba survived and was discharged just three days later without any lasting consequences. Wow, That's my jaw just lucky. hit the floor. Luckily, there were no metal rods down there. A girl's Peter. best friend. Back in 2012, Diamonds? following an ordeal that's too shocking to discuss on YouTube without getting demonetized, a woman named Michalina Kasaprak <laughs> found herself tied up and locked in darkness inside a cardboard box buried in the ground. Upon realizing the reality of her situation, trying to keep her breathing as shallow as possible to preserve oxygen, she began frantically thinking for a way to escape. Suddenly, she remembered she was wearing her engagement ring. The diamond was set so that it stood out of the ring, which she could use as a very basic cutting tool. With a desperate determination, she started cutting away at the binds around her wrists and eventually managed to break through them. Now it was time for the box, but proved tougher than it looked. But after an enormous effort and countless punches and scratches, Michalina managed to punch through. Dirt fell down on her face and clothes, and with one final burst of strength, she smashed out of the hole and saw the sky again. There was no sweeter sight. Exhausted, but very much alive, she clambered out of the box, staggered to the road, and flagged down a motorist who called the police. The individual responsible for all this was arrested shortly afterwards and sentenced to 20 years in prison. Good riddance. A whole lot of strength, perseverance, and willpower got Michalina out of that hole. But if she didn't have her engagement ring, it could have been a very different story. I guess diamonds really are a girl's best friend. As long cool as ball sharp. out of there. As far as jobs go, history has shown that mining is one of the worst. Aside from the long hours and persistent danger, the conditions are unpleasant to say the least. Obviously. damp, cold, it's akin to a tomb down there. But in some parts of the world, people are still forced to brave terrible conditions and go down into the mines to scrape a living. Like cobalt miners in the Congo. Cobalt is an important metal used to make batteries, and the Congo has over 70% of the world's supply. In other words, it's big business. The problem is, mining operations are plagued with human rights issues, corruption, and poor safety standards. Back in March 2023, a group of miners were working underground when the worst thing possible happened. The mine collapsed on top of them. Trapped and pinned down in a tiny pitch-black cavern with the ceiling crumbling in by the second, things looked dire. This may sound like a nightmare, but it's a very real way many miners meet their end. Officially, more than 15,000 miners perish every year. But that number is likely much higher with all the undeclared accidents that occur. Some estimates put that figure closer to the hundreds of thousands. Those are not good odds. Mm, Luckily nope. for our miners, there were other workers on the surface. They jumped heroically into action and started digging wildly at the ground with their hands. But there wasn't much time. The mine was in the side of a hill, and the collapse had destabilized the ground farther up causing rocks to come hurtling down directly at the rescuers. Undeterred, they kept digging, and thanks to some deft dodging worthy of Muhammad Ali, they broke through without being hit. Amazingly, all nine of the buried miners came bursting out of the occluded mine entrance one by one and were pulled to safety. Ooh, even so, I'd highly consider a career change. Window pane. Okay, first, what you said, uh, what he said about Ali. No, that was too soon, man. That was too soon. And this freaked up, but she got freaking lucky too. But the dot, but this whole situation here, I think I heard of it. If there's one thing that I keep getting alerted on on YouTube, it's stuff that involves. 
people who get arrested. Certain types of people. And all that. And if I go into any more of this, I probably would get demonetized, so I'm not even going to try it. But I think you can put two Pain. and two together. I love the feeling of flying. I adore it. Can't get enough of it. Some people, however, aren't so keen. And after I heard about British Airways Flight 5390, I can see why. It all started what? a couple of days before the airplane was due to take off. While performing scheduled maintenance, the shift manager realized the captain's side windscreen needed to be replaced. So, he set to work doing so. Only, he stupidly hadn't read the plane's instruction manual and used the wrong screws to screw it back in with, ones that were too narrow to hold the panes in. But, after self-certifying his own work, the plane was cleared to fly. Oh, boy. Oh, Two days no. later, 81 passengers and six crew boarded the plane in Birmingham, UK, ready to travel to Malaga. Little did they know, they were about to have the most terrifying journey of their lives. Everything started out normally. Ten minutes after takeoff, the two co-pilots, Captain Lancaster and First Officer Alistair Atchison, were in the cockpit with their flight attendant, Nigel Ogden, while the cabin crew prepared for food service. Then, the plane hit 17,300 feet, and everything changed. At this altitude, the pressure difference between the outside and inside was too much for the poorly installed side window. The screws holding it in place popped off, and the entire pane flew off. Immediately, the whole plane erupted into chaos. The decompression tore the cockpit door off its hinges and slammed straight into the throttle levers, blocking them. Even worse, Captain Lancaster was pulled halfway out of the plane, where he remained pinned with his feet still inside, pushing against the control column. Ogden rushed to his aid, and luckily grabbed hold of his legs just in time to stop him flying out. But that wasn't the only problem. Because Lancaster's feet were pushing against the control column, the autopilot disconnected, and the plane plunged into a nosedive. And with the throttle levers blocked, Atchison couldn't do anything to stop it. The plane was shooting back down to earth like a speeding bullet. Atchison desperately tried to radio in help, but wind was whipping so violently around the cabin that he couldn't hear anything. Suddenly, two more flight attendants fought their way into the cockpit and stamped on the door, breaking it in two. The throttles were free. Then they rushed to aid Ogden, who by now was suffering from frostbite and struggling to hold on to the captain. With the controls free, Atchison managed to get the plane under control, but it looked like it was too late for Lancaster. The captain's body had slid round the side of the plane, and now he was face first against the window. His skin was gray and his eyes wide and unblinking, but they couldn't release him in case he was thrown into the engines, which would bring the plane down. Eventually, Atchison slowed the plane to a reasonable enough speed that he could attempt a landing. However, it was over Southampton, a city he was utterly unfamiliar with, relying purely on the guidance of an air traffic controller and without his captain. Atchison pulled off what he thought impossible. He landed the plane. Not only that, but he landed it safely with all 81 passengers shaken, but unharmed. Oh. Wow. The crew weren't so lucky with injuries ranging from frostbite to a dislocated shoulder. But that's nowhere near as bad as it could have been. And then, there was Captain Lancaster. He'd been pinned outside the plane amid brutal 370 mile per hour winds in freezing temperatures as cold as one degree Fahrenheit. Yet within just a few minutes of touchdown, he opened his eyes. Incredibly, against all odds, the man was alive. After being rushed to hospital, he was treated for frostbite and bone fractures, then made a full recovery. The fact he survived is nothing short of a medical miracle. The whole oh, incident sparked off God. a huge investigation and led to an overhaul in the way maintenance staff are trained. So don't worry, it should never happen again. Not that it put Lancaster off. Within just five months, he was back flying jets. Crikey. If I was him, Damn. I'd be keeping my two feet firmly on the ground. Low point. I have to agree. I can't think of many words more commonly associated with accidents than heavy and machinery. Uh, I also can't think of any accident yes. as horrendous as the one yeah, I'm about to that's... tell you about. Get ready, because mm. this is intense. 
Back in 2008, 25-year-old factory worker Matthew Lowe was working beside a computer-controlled conveyor near Barnsley, UK, when his overalls got caught in the machinery. Before he could react, he was dragged back and pinned to the conveyor, which was rolling straight towards a tiny five-inch gap in the machine. He panicked. There was nowhere else for his body to go, and his overalls were still firmly entangled. He'd be completely crushed. At the last second, he noticed a slightly bigger gap just below the tiny one and quickly pushed his head through it. But it was too late for the rest of him. You know a CD case? Imagine your entire body getting pulled through a hole the size of one. I can't imagine what that must have sounded like, let alone felt like. The machine chewed Matthew up like he was made of polystyrene and spat him out on the floor. His clothes were tattered and almost all the bones in his body were completely broken. Yet somehow, he was still alive and even conscious. That's when the pain hit. He oh. screamed. Some of his fellow workers rushed to his aid and called an ambulance. When the paramedics came, they couldn't believe Matthew was still breathing. He was a total mess. Yeah. As carefully as they could, they put him on a stretcher and took him to a hospital. But the ordeal was far from over. The surgery required for such a serious case involved pinning his shattered bones back together piece by piece with metal rods. And I mean Ooh. lots of metal rods. All in all, doctors had to perform six operations before Matthew was whole again. Miraculously, though, he pulled through. And 18 months later, he'd made a near full recovery. What? Yeah, incredibly, he escaped the ordeal with only some slight arm issues to show for it. Perhaps even more surprisingly, he went back to work with the same company. Jeez, at the very least, I hope they didn't make him wear any overalls. Whew. That just about brings us to the end of this installment of our yeah. Luckiest Survivor series. Which of these... Okay, that... That was... Hmm. I don't want to imagine that last one. That is generally horrifying, to say the least. But honestly, I think the person that survived... Some, something that was completely impossible? is either involving this whole chocolate incident or the captain who survived being ejected from his plane with three people holding him and preventing him from flying out completely. Suffering multiple things that would kill someone, frostbite, uh, air and wind pressure, having his eardrums probably destroyed, his eyes pro were probably bloodshot or bleeding, probably heavily damaged or destroyed. I don't know how... Uh, one's vision would behave if they would fall from such a height down. Because I'm pretty sure that would kill someone. And, oh my gosh. He lived through it. Oh boy. That is something... No normal person can deal with. I said those two are probably the luckiest people on this planet. Because the woman should have died from the fire, frostbite, and so much other BS that she had to deal with. And yet she did. Not to say that I'm not happy she survived. I am happy she survived. But the amount of stuff that she went through was complete BS that I... Yeah, I think you can get the picture. 
that was just not possible to survive. My gosh, these people went through some crazy stuff. But yeah, tell me what you think was the luckiest someone survived from the impossible. Because that was freaking way out there, in my personal opinion. There is no way someone should be able to go through all that without very, very severe damage. It just seems impossible to me. But uh, yeah, with this said, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button down below. Hit the subscribe button to support the channel, support the content provided, and so on and so forth. And if you're asking about why I'm doing the uh, some extra noise, well, it's spring. Or it's close to spring. I don't, I haven't, I didn't really check when spring was. But if there's one thing that comes to me, I just can't handle the pollen. And it sucks. I've been taking the necessary medication. Don't worry. I'm not neglecting myself. But it is a pain in the butt to deal with. Because along with that, I have to adjust to the spring again. Which is another reason why I prefer the winter better. Even the summers are a pain in the butt. I prefer fall and winter. Than anything else. <sighs> but yeah. With this said. I hope you all enjoy. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.